Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. Something special tonight, as we reach the end of the second half of season one, colloquially known as the summer season. This episode, written by Arch Obler, again features high terror tones with another mad scientist in his meta chamber of death. While the shadow would continue, and certainly rise to even greater heights than what this first season offered, it is notable to mention, in more than just passing, that this episode is Orson Welles' last as The Shadow. While Orson would continue his career, and in fact in just over a month from this broadcast, become infamous for his War of the Worlds radio show, The Shadow too would reach new heights, with a new voice behind the microphone in the following season. This isn't an end, it's just the closing of the first chapter of The Shadow in this format on radio. Enjoy from September 18th, 1938, Professor X. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, The Shadow's latest adventure starts in just a moment. Right now, here's a short safety reminder. Next week, next month, may be too late to replace smooth, unsafe tires with new Goodrich Safety Silvertown. What if your tires suddenly lose their grip and skid wildly over a wet highway? What if a heat blister forms inside of your tire and bang, without warning, a high-speed blowout throws your car out of control? The sooner you equip with new Goodrich Silvertowns, the safer your family will be. I'll guarantee you'll never know what the word stop really means until you've felt the non-skid grip of the amazing lifesaver tread on a wet road. Yes, and you'll never know what real freedom from blowout worries is until you've discovered the peace of mind that comes from riding on the only tires built with the famous Golden Fly. Treat your family to two-way protection against skids, and blowouts at no extra cost. For safety's sake, ride on Goodrich Safety Silvertown. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard, his true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, Professor X. Yeah, yeah. 3,000 volts on the plate. 6,000 volts on the fourth amplifier. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, now I send a little more current through the millimeter, and we see what... Ugh, knocking, knocking. Why do people bother me all the time? Oh, yeah, 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 I come. Oh, bothering a man. How can I get my work done? Well, well, what is it? What are you... Uh, hiya, Professor. Oh, oh Mr. Martin, I, I did not know it was you. Yeah, that's what I figured. Working late as usual, eh, Professor? Well, yeah, there's so much to do and so little time in which to do it. Yeah. But Mr. Martin, you you didn't come over to take everything away from me. Yeah, I sunk a lot of money in this laboratory, Professor. But, but, but please, please, a little more time. Ah, take it easy, Professor. All I came over here was for, to see how far you've got with your work. Now, why don't you show me? Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. I, I show you. Over over here, please. Okay. Now, now you see, under this cathode tube, I, I have a large container. 
I open the lid. Watch. It's a cat, so what? Wait, wait I, I, I close the lid. Now, now watch. Watch close. Now, now, now watch, watch close, Mr. Martin. Watch close. You, you see, I, I have done it. Done what? You throw a switch, a lot of sparks fly, a bang like a firecracker. So what? Yeah, but look. Look in the box. Okay. The cat. Why, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is gone. Disintegration. Complete disintegration. You mean that cat is gone into thin air? Yeah, yeah. The rays of the tube caused tremendous electronic activity in the living body placed beneath it. With the result that when the potential reaches a high enough peak, the body disintegrates completely. Never mind the, the scientific stuff. What I want to know is, why didn't you tell me about this before? I put up the dough for this place on a crack-brained idea so no one else would listen to. Now you got put it over and you didn't want to tell me about it. What's the idea? Oh, yeah, but, but, but you, you don't understand. My, my work is not done. I saw it with my own yeah, eyes. Yeah, but that is only half of it. Reintegration. The assembly of the body at another point. That is yet undone. Talk <laughs> English. When my work is complete, I will be able to disintegrate living flesh so that it can be sent across space by wires, like, like messages are now sent. You hear me, Mr. Martin? Living flesh by wire. Yeah, what good will that be? Why, it, it will change the world. Human beings will be able to travel from one place to the other as quickly as radio waves now travel. Oh, I tell you, Mr. Martin, only a few months more work and I will be You'll able be to... You'll be able to do nothing. Well, wh wh what do you mean? Your work is through. Your... Through? Yeah, no, through. No, my work... Done, finished. No, no, but my experiments have only begun. And I say they're finished. Well, what do you... Why do you say that, Mr. Martin? You, you mean you, you don't give me any more money? When I first heard about your idea... I said to myself, okay, fella, maybe he's a crackpot and maybe he ain't. But it's worth putting up a little dough. Well, now you've done your work, so finish. Yeah, but, but, but I, I say again, I am not to. And I say, uh, it's true, ain't it, that if I was to put a man in that box, pull them controls, bang, and he'd be gone just like that? Yeah, 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 but the cattle tube expands itself each time the disintegration takes place. You mean you have to put in a new tube every time? Yeah, yeah. Well, put in another one right now. Oh, but alas, I cannot. That was the last one I have here. I have used them all experimenting. Where'd you get them from? A new consignment is coming tomorrow. I've placed a permanent order with the company who makes them. Tomorrow, eh? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you've done what I wanted you to, eh? <laughs> I've got a couple of people I don't like. Oh! Yeah, and I'll put them in there. The box is plenty big enough. Shoot in the juice and, well... No body, no murder, no evidence. How do you like that, Professor? Oh, no, 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 but you, you, you cannot do that. I, I have discovered this for the good of man. I, I will tell the police. <laughs> so long, Professor. I told you you were finished. Now the machine belongs to me. I'm the only one who knows about it. <laughs> And I'll have no trouble getting hold of the new tubes to make it work. What a strange sort of road this is, Lamont. Mm -hmm. It's leading us to a very strange man, Margot. What do you mean? Well, Professor Kramer isn't exactly a simple character. The man's been on the faculty of some of the greatest universities in the county. Great inventive mind, yet he's... A man whom very few people know about. But why go all the way out here to this place to visit him? Congratulations. Why congratulate Because me? in spite of the fact that you're a woman, you've controlled your curiosity for exactly one hour and 15 minutes of driving. <laughs> all right. Make fun of me. But I do want to know. Why come out here? Professor Kramer is one of my instructors in school. For some reason, he's, well, he took a sort of liking to me, and I haven't heard from him for some time. In fact, I haven't even known where he's been. You see... He left the university some time ago and has been conducting some private experiments, something to do with cathode tubes. Whatever they are. Well, to make it simple, call them X-ray tubes. At any rate, I haven't heard from Professor Kramer until, until yesterday. And then? Then I got a rather mysterious note telling me that he had something very important to show me, something that 
no one else in the world had ever seen. Well? So here we are, on our way. Something that no one else in the world has ever seen. Now, you are interested, aren't you? Oh, I should hope so. But it's so late. H- how much further do we have to go? I understand he lives in the house right at the top of this hill we're climbing. Something that no one else in the world has ever seen. Intriguing, isn't it? Well, here we are at the top, but I don't see any house. This is a wild goose chase. Oh, no, Lamont, look. Look through the trees. Yes, you're right. This is a house. What a weird-looking place to live, miles away from town. Well, of course, I never like company. Well, let's go see what's up. All right. Trees are awfully thick, aren't they? Fire. Come on, take my arm. Almost dark. I can hardly Keep see Keep hold of me. Come along. Oh, well, look at this path. No one's been to visit the professor since last fall. Lamont, how strange. What? It's dark, and yet there are no lights in the house. I noticed that. Could it be the wrong address? Let us at the house on top of the hill. It's so deserted. Well, we'll find out quickly enough whether I made a mistake. Here, up these stairs. Somehow this place gives me the shivers. Well, after all, Margot, I didn't say I was taking you to a haunted house. Well, it must be the wrong house, Lamont. Look. No, no, you look. Card under the bell, Alfred Kramer. Then it is the right place. Certainly. Find a bell button. No. There's a bell pull. She'd open the door. It's cold out here. Must be asleep. I'll try again. Not a sound from in there. Strange, you'd be asleep so early. I'll try knocking. Lamont, the door's open. Open all the time. Come on. Wait for me, Lamont. Professor? Professor Kramer? It's dark. Professor Kramer, are you here? Lamont Cranston. He only had some light. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's now we'll see. Lamont. What? Well, Lamont, what's happened here? Everything's torn up. Professor Kramer! Professor Kramer, are you here? Professor Kramer! Lamont, is he there? No. Bedroom's empty. Everything undisturbed. Everything in this room's ripped apart. What's happened here? Look at the wall over there. What? Those wires torn loose. Look as if someone ripped some equipment out. Yes, that's true, but why should the professor have left so suddenly? Professor Kramer never did anything suddenly in his life. I just don't get this. He isn't here, though. We were going away... Why should he have asked me to come out here tonight? Well, we just decided to leave, that's all. You said yourself hmm. he was an eccentric old man. Come on, Lamont, let, let's get out of here. No, wait. What is it? The wall. Look. What is it, Lamont? Over here. See? Blue plaster, wet. Wet plaster? Yes. Do you see, Margot? This whole section here has been replastered within the last few hours. What does that mean? I'm going to find out what it means. Lamont, what are you going to do with that stick? Stand aside, Margot. I'm going to find out why this wall was replastered. Lamont, you shouldn't. Damaging the wall, Professor Crane. Margot, look out. Oh. You tried to break away from the original wall. Oh. oh! A man fell out of the wall. Professor Kramer. It's Professor Kramer. Oh. Look. Look, that bullet hole. He's been murdered. Oh, but who? His what? equipment, his experiment. Oh, don't you understand? Whatever it is, he wanted me to come up here tonight and see. Someone murdered him and stole that equipment. How horrible. Oh. A poor old man has spent his entire life devising things to help humanity. And for that he gets this, a, a bullet through his head and a plaster wall for a grave. Well, Professor Kramer, I promise you this. Whoever did this to you will meet the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, before we again join the shadow, let me ask you this question. If you're trying to squeeze the last few miles out of your tires, if you're driving around on smooth, worn tires, do you know what a chance you're taking? The shadow knows. It doesn't pay to gamble on tires. Thousands are killed or injured every year when skids throw cars out of control. Yes, motorist. And before you experience that sickening pit-of-the-stomach feeling, equip your car with the new Goodrich Silvertown tire. Then you will have the greatest skid protection ever offered, the skid protection of the lifesaver tread. And if you're wondering how the new Goodrich Silvertown stacks up against other tires, listen to this. The engineers of America's largest independent testing laboratory tested the regular and premium price tires of America's six largest tire manufacturers with these results. The new Goodrich Silvertown with Lifesaver Tread gave greater skid resistance than any other tire tested regardless of price. It also gave greater non-skid mileage than any other tire tested 
in its own price range. It averaged 19.1% more miles before the tires wore smooth. And that's the same as saying you'll get every sixth mile free. Right now is the time to replace any smooth, dangerous tires on your car with Goodrich, spelled G-O-O-D-R-I-C-H. Goodrich Safety Silvertown, the safest thing on wheels. There is no extra cost. Come on. I thought you told me you were an electrician. Sure, sure I am, Mr. Martin, but gosh, I never connected up a rigmarole like this one. Listen, fella. You said yourself it was a simple job to connect this apparatus up following the diagrams in that notebook. Well, sure, Mr. Martin, but I got it almost done. It's just a couple more wires. Well, but... get going. Oh, sure. Hey, sure is a funny setup. Like an x ray machine and. Because it isn't exactly like any X-ray setup I ever saw. Hurry it. up, hurry up. Sure, Mr. Martin. Yeah. This way, yeah. Yes, and this way. There you are. Got it connected up just like it says in those diagrams. Say, uh, who is this Kramer fellow who's got his name signed on all the pages of the notebook, Mr. Martin? Uh, is he the fellow who built this? Uh... All connected up, eh? Yeah, sure, just... Just like it says right here. The new cathode tube has been put in? Oh, yeah, and the power's ready to be turned on. You, you're going to tell me now, aren't you? Yeah. I'll let the machine itself tell you. Well, what do you mean? It's, uh, it's a gun. Well, yeah, what, you've what? been asking a lot of questions, fella. Yeah, well, what are you pointing the gun at me for? Open the lid of that box by the machine. Well, why? What are you going to do? Open it. Okay. I don't know what you intend doing, but... Cut the talk and open the box. There. It's open now. Now, get in there and lie down. In, in the box? Yeah. I ain't done nothing, Mr. Hey, Martin. I... Will you get in that box? Now, lie down. Yeah, but, Mr. You but... want me to drill you with a bullet? That'll make you lie down fast enough. Oh, no, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, don't shoot. Now. Hey, just don't. Don't shut me in the box. I... I ain't done nothing. Mr. Martin. Hey, let me out of here. I can't breathe. Let me out of here, Mr. Martin. Now we'll see if Mr. the Martin. machine works or not. Let me out of here, Mr. Martin. I told this switch. Mr. Martin, let me... That part of it's all right. You won't kick and yell much longer after this switch is closed. <laughs> It does work. I'll know as soon as I open the box. It works. There's nothing left of them. The box is empty. All right, Margo, this is as far as we ride. We'll uh, walk the rest of the way. Whatever you say, Lamont. Let's go. I don't understand why you came all the way out here, Lamont. What could these farms out here possibly have to do with the murder of Professor Kramer? Well, the man who murdered the old man didn't think it possible that anyone would call on Kramer before that plaster wall dried up. Yeah, walked down this road. But what was your finding the professor got to do with this trip, Lamont? Not expecting anybody to dig behind that plaster wall. The murder didn't go through the professor's pockets. And in one of those pockets, I found a letter. A letter signed Joe Martin. Martin? Who's he? I checked carefully on Mr. Martin's career, and I find he's a rather strange individual to be having dealings with a man of Professor Kramer's caliber. What do you mean? Martin is a man who made a great deal of money during Prohibition days. And a great number of enemies. Police suspect him of at least half a dozen murders, but there's... Never been any tangible evidence against him. So many of his bootlegger friends were gunning after him shortly before Prohibition ended. He left the country. Turned just a short while ago and has been living in seclusion. Why he should have been furnishing money to the professor, as the letter indicated, is something the shadow wants to know. And Martin lives out here? Right. This farm right ahead. Well, look at that fence. A barbed wire fence all around the place. Well, let's bother with the gate. Come on. Get through these strands of wires and sort of surprise our host, Mr. Martin. You'll tear my dress. No, I'll hold the wires apart and you can slip through. Here. 
Circuit of the wire. I got the alarm at the house and I ran out just in time to see you pull someone off. Now, who was it? Where is he? You see, I'm quite alone. Oh, so you're sure about that, are you, sister? Of course. Okay. That's swell. If there's no one with you, you can come along with me. Come, come along where? In the house. <laughs> I need a sort of a guinea pig. A guinea pig? Yeah. A human one. For an experiment. <laughs> Works okay, don't it? What is it? Not scared much, are you? Why, why should I be frightened? <laughs> yeah. You're a funny one, all right. You're alone, there's no question about that. I found your car where you parked it, and nobody else in it. I don't know. Sure can't figure it out. I thought I saw a man on the wire. Tell me why I should be frightened. No, why not, sister? I don't look like a boy scout now, do I? And this room full of electrical stuff, it don't look like a soda fountain now, does it? Still see no reason to be frightened. No. <laughs> well, something tells me that before you're ten minutes older... Yeah, you know what you're going to be doing? What? You're going to be screaming your head off. Because you're going to be more scared than any dame's been scared in all her life. Do you always talk in riddles? <laughs> Come on. Take a look at this box. Come on, take a look, I tell you. What's in it? Interested, ain't you? Take a look. Why, it's empty. Yeah, but not for long. You see, you're going to be in it. I? Yeah. You remember what I said? A guinea pig? <laughs> yeah, a pretty one, too. What are you talking about? Why should I get in that box? Kind of stalling, ain't you? Now, who are you expecting? The Marines? The boyfriend on a white horse? You've got to tell me what this is all about. Sure, I'll tell you why not. It's your one-way ticket to hell. The same ticket I'm going to issue to a lot of my pals. You mean kill me and, and others? Yeah. The old professor figured out a sure way to get rid of the rats you don't like. And a way no cop living or dead could figure out. You put them in a box, you pull a switch, and finish. No body, no nothing. <laughs> neat, eh? Too neat, Joe Martin. Hey, who's talking? A voice that should have talked to you a long time ago. Come on out wherever you are. Come on out and I'll let you have it. How can you send a bullet through something you can't see, Joe Martin? A voice? Why, it's very close to me. Hey, who are you? Call me the Shadow. Uh, the Shadow? From your face, I see you've heard the name. Uh, I heard it, yeah, sure. The voice that comes out of nowhere. But it can't be. Voices don't talk out of air. It's a trick. I will, men, not to see me. You, woman. That's why you weren't afraid. Expecting him, eh? And now he's here. But he won't get me. Get in there. Uh, uh, Margo! Uh, Are you rat right throwing her in there? No. I've got my hand on the electric switch. The minute you touch me or try to let her out of the box, I'll throw the switch and she'll be dead. And neither you or the devil will be able to get her back. Margo, it's all right, Margo. Yeah. It's all right as long as you don't touch me or touch that box. <laughs> so you're the great shadow that's got all the smart boys worried, eh? <laughs> well, what are you going to do about this? Don't pull that switch. Now, why shouldn't I? I paid that old boy Kramer plenty for this chance. You murdered him. Oh, you know about that too, do you? 
Well, maybe that makes me all the more anxious to throw this switch and get rid of your dame. What do you want? Oh, you're ready to make a deal, are you? Well, that's smart. What do you want? First, I want what no one else has ever been able to ask. What's that? Speak up. I want to see you. See me? Yeah, see you. See you in flesh and blood. Nobody's kidding me. You're not just a voice coming out of here. You've got a head and a body and legs and arms. And I want to see them. No one... No one has ever seen me. The Lord help me! No air! Oh, Lamont, hey? <laughs> well, fella, you heard what she was yelling. No air. Are you going to let me see who you are? <laughs> so maybe I can send a slug through you? Oh, not talking, eh? <laughs> Don't like the idea of me getting the best of you, eh? All right, fella. I'm giving you the count of three to make up your mind. At three, I throw the switch, and so help me, there won't be enough left of that dame to put in a matchbox. One. Two. Do I get to see your shadow? Okay, then, here she goes. Three. Lamar! 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 It's all right. Lamont, are you all right? Let me help you out of here. Uh, Leah. Oh, oh, that horrible sound. I no, no, you... no, I'm, I'm all right. But, Martin, where... Look on the floor below the switchboard. Oh. Not a pretty sight, is it? Oh, his face. The what? electricity burned him as crispy as if he had sat in the electric chair. Don't look at him anymore, dear. But, but how did it happen? He was looking around trying to see me. His hand reached out to the switch. Instead of touching the insulated handle, his fingers... Closed on the metal. Oh, but Lamont, why did you let him... Why well, did you let him put me... Well, finish your sentence. You mean, why did I let him throw the switch? Well, because it wouldn't have hurt you anyway. Why not? While he was busy threatening me, I... I disconnected the wires leading to the cathode tube. Oh. Risking your life would have oh. been too high a price, Margot. Even to catch a rat of Martin's sort. The rat caught himself in his own trap. Yes. Yes, his own trap. The penalty for murder in this state is to die by electricity. Well, we can close the books on Joe Martin. The law has taken its course. <laughs> You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> all the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Mm -hmm.